Beautiful humans, welcome back to another episode of the I Like Birds podcast. I'm your host, Zach Rippey, and this podcast is dedicated to the non-believers, the confused believers, and the true believers. Because I, at one time or another, was all three, and I'm here to help you get a better understanding of who Jesus is and what he's all about. Let's grow in our faith together. You learn as I learn. I like the Bible, and I like words, so therefore, I like birds. Let's start the show. People, are you ready? Hey. Oh. Let's start the show. Oh, yeah. Let's start the show. Pump day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the I Like Bird Show. We are live in the beautiful state of Kentucky. We're recording on a new software, uh, Audacity to be specific. We're on a different laptop than we've used before. Uh, because we're on the road, so I wanted to bring the podcast gear with me and do a little uh, podcast in another state. I think it'd be a cool idea. And also, you know, we talk about country. So we got to be out here in the country driving tractors, looking at horses and freezing our butts off while we visit my sister and brother-in-law and my nephews as well. Uh, and yeah, man. So if the audio sounds a little bit different, it's probably because we're on a new software. If it sounds great, just don't even worry about it. Uh, I think it's a good software. My buddy Jeff recommended it, and he uses it, and I uh, brought the gear that I still use, so I feel like the audio is still going to be good, so hoping for the best. The only thing is I don't really know how to edit that well on this new software. I'm kind of winging it. I think I'm just going to do a long form, so if I mess up and I say some words, there's going to be no edits, so it's just going to be straight off the dome, straight off the cuff, uh, and we're going to have some fun with it. Uh, we had a great few days uh, here in Kentucky so far. We're leaving uh, today, actually. Uh, off to Florida to go uh, for a wedding for our best friend, um, Catherine's best friend, Haley. She's a close friend of ours, as well as her um, her fiancé, Mr. Suchin, and we're super happy for them. So we're going down there. We're going to visit my boy Olivier, see my mom. It's going to be a good time, and then we're coming on back to Texas and grinding it out for a couple months, and then uh, we should have some big news for you guys after that. Uh, we have done so much traveling over the last few years, man, and let's just say I don't see that slowing down anytime soon because the ministry takes you where it takes you. Right. And enough about that and where we are and what we're doing. Let's talk God, because that's what you came here for. You didn't come here for the rippy. You came here for Jesus, God and the Holy Spirit. All right. You know, when you see someone that you highly respect, post up a verse and you go look at that verse. Right. It just kind of like you see somebody post a verse. and You're like, let me go look at the verse. And it gets the wheel spinning to read the before and the after of that verse to get a real full range of context of what that verse is alluding to, what it's about and what is being communicated from the author to us, the reader. Right. Well, that happened to me last night and it inspired me to kick my wife out and record this episode while we're out here in Kentucky. All right. And it's weird because I was like, man, I want to bring the gear, but I don't know when I'm going to get an opportunity to record. And therefore, you got to make things happen when you want to get get the word of God out to people and just kind of, you know, hone in on what, what you're doing in this life. You know, vacations d- don't mean uh, slow down and stop. Stop working. It means grind even harder. Right. So I'm excited to actually be able to do this. And my wife is dope. She was um, very uh, thumbs up and uh, was cool with uh, dipping out. <laughs> so I appreciate it for that. Um, January 20th is today's date that we are writing and recording this. If you've been following the show, you know that we have had this date on our minds for quite some time because, as you know, the two political parties have opposite ideologies and philosophies, not just on abortion laws, taxes, immigration, but mostly on uh, godly values and God-given freedoms. Now, we have lost some people who listened to this show along the way due to my strong speech and how I perceive the world around me, and my views on what goes on in this country have turned some people away. But we have gained something so much bigger. We have gained the trust in the ones who listen that we aren't going to softball these episodes and live in a snowflake bubble of the world around us so we don't get canceled. We're not worried about getting canceled, y'all. We're worried about preaching the word of God and just taking you guys along with me on this faith journey. Now, The verse that pulled me into this chair and into my Bible is Ecclesiastes 3.11. I'll give you a few minutes to pull out your Bible or your Bible apps. (laughs) And if you guys remember, I did my first ever sermon called Chasing the Wind. You can actually check it out. It's on the podcast episodes if you want to check it out. Um, And I was speaking at my church, Calvary. It was a great experience. I actually did my first um, sermon out of this book in the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes. And it was so funny because I I could barely say it when I started... uh, Doing the sermon, I was like, am I going to mess up how to say Ecclesiastes on stage? Uh, But I I did pretty well and I actually really like the the way it's called now. I like the I like the chapter. I like the the whole book. Definitely recommend it. It's about basically 
um, realizing what's important in this life. And I think it's a, I highly recommend it. it is it takes you on a journey and experience. But we're going to be really specifically. Uh, there's only 11 chapters, uh, and that's kind of I, when I did the sermon. I was bouncing around from chapter to chapter and kind of just giving it to the students as far as uh, what I wanted to communicate with them, as far as uh, chasing God instead of chasing the wind. Basically, meaning everything that you think is going to make you happy, but at the end of the day, what really makes you happy is your relationship with God and living a godly life and trying to obtain that walk with Jesus that um, we all that listen to the show try to obtain. And but today we're going to actually focus specifically on chapter three, because that's the verse that uh, God is here. So um, let me just read you the verse that God is here. The verse powerfully says, uh, remember, Ecclesiastes 311, it powerfully says, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. And it's really hit home for me because it gave me the faith in God that despite uh, man's shortcomings and man's sin and man's deception that God is in control. He's still in control. He's still on the throne. He's still what we need to have our eyes and our belief in. We cannot see the scope of God's work from beginning to end is what it says. And while reading this verse, I am also in the chapter in my Jesus on Leadership book that is teaching on the point of humility and patience. Patience. The book says Impatience leads to reaction against events instead of waiting for divine direction. Mm, 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 That is good stuff right there. That is a powerful sentence. I want to read it again for you guys. The book says impatience leads to reaction against events instead of waiting for divine direction. Impatience causes leaders to sacrifice insight for effort. Deep, right? And I admit with you guys and within myself definitely within myself that I have been very impatient in this election season in this political season in this COVID-19 season I have been rushing ahead to see what God is doing and trying to get insight on what man is doing I've been actively seeking prophetic voices that are speaking on what is to come and words that have already come to pass And let me read you some more because this is a valuable teaching for your life and my life as we move forward into the year of 2021. It says that Jesus had a sense of timing. Jesus understood that the Father had ordained seasons in his life. This was part of what enabled him to wait as a leader. Jesus said several times during his ministry, my time has not yet come. The first was when his mother told him they had run out of wine at a wedding feast in Cana. He said to her, dear woman, why do you involve me? My time has not yet come. John 2, 4. On the night of Jesus's betrayal, John, the gospel writer, records it was just before the Passover feast that Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. John 13, verse 1. Jesus confessed to his Father that the time had come for his glorification. Jesus knew the importance of God's timing, especially for a leader with a mission. Someone once said, you cannot be impatient and humble. Ooh, I like that because... I struggle with both of those things, guys. I'm working on it, but I struggle with patience with my son. Uh, specifically, I struggle with patience with um, just, you know, outside stresses that kind of uh, impact my life. I struggle. Uh, I don't think I struggle with humbling myself before God, but I definitely am more of, um, I feel like, a, a confident individual that sometimes I get a little diluted into um, what I need to be uh, humble in. Right. And I believe this is true because it says this. I believe this is true because impatience leads to reaction against events instead of waiting for divine uh, direction. Impatience causes leaders to sacrifice insight for effort, like we talked about. And it causes us, you and I, to trust our natural instincts rather than God's work in our life. That's good. And then this one is called Impatient for God's Call. I am goal. And this is the author, Gene Wilkes, speaking. He says, I am goal oriented and task minded. Um, I am an an achiever. Uh, Keep moving is one of my natural core values. I sense that God's call on my life to pastor when I was in high school. I went to college and seminary and served on the staff of a large suburban church as the ministry to youth. At the age of 33, I was serving as an executive director of a private foundation that owned and operated camps conferences in Colorado and Texas. And I had been ordained and had earned my Ph.D. in New Testament studies, but I was not a pastor. One day I sat quietly on a mountain outside of a Colorado camp 
and I opened my heart to God praying, why haven't you let me be a pastor? I have my degree and experience and I know I can do the job. Why haven't you let me do what I thought you called me to do 16 years ago? I was upset. Then the still small voice of the spirit said, Gene, you can do, you could be a postman and do what I called you to do. I listened longer. God's spirit pointed out that the position I held had little to do with his call on my life. The spirit continued, be faithful to the task at hand. And I sensed that God knew how all this would work together for his good. Romans 8, 28 came to mind. I realized that God was still at work in my life, molding me into the kind of pastor that he wanted me to become. I learned that God's timing may not be our timing, but God's timing is always right. A year later, I was an intern pastor at the church I have now served at for over 10 years. And that's big on my life because you guys know that I'm pursuing that. But then again, it's like I can still begin the ministry now. I can still do the Lord's work now. I can still follow Christ now. And you can too. You can still do all the things that you know that God wants you to do in your life, and he will open those doors when the time sees fit, as long as you have that patience and faith, right? And you may be waiting on God's timing in your life. You may feel that what you're doing now has nothing to do with God's call in your life or the mission that God has called you to complete. So be patient. Wait. Find a quiet hill or a field or uh, a Starbucks uh, patio table where you can sit still and hear the voice of God. You will soon discover that if you pay attention to God's timing in your present, you will see God's timing in your future. I like that a lot. Let's read that again. You will soon discover that if you pay attention to God's timing in your present, which kind of means like being one on one with God, getting in the in, in the ring, in the box with him and just kind of seeing what God has already done in your life. And even just something that you thought was supposed to go this way, but it went this way and it was for the better. You will see that God's timing in your future as well. Humility and waiting are a part of a server uh, of a servant leader's lifestyle. A godly confidence combined. See how, how I told you guys how, how I had a lot of confidence. A godly confidence combined with trusting patience allows the servant leader to carry out the mission of God in his life. Humility and patience equip him or her to carry out lifelong purposes. That was deep. That was deep. And there's a worship song that comes to my mind uh, when I was actually uh, I like when I uh, got up to go to the bathroom while I was writing this. And like the song just totally popped in my head. And I was like, man, I need to write that down because it says um, the song that popped in my head was like I it says the lyrics go. Uh, I know you're working. I know you're working in all things for my good. And that like that song just randomly popped in my head. I haven't listened to it in weeks. I uh, can't even tell you the name of it right now because I I don't really uh, I just know the, the melody, you know, and uh and I was thinking about that, that God is working all things for my good. And I think that applies to everybody that um, is his children. And whether that be a blessing or a lesson, we'll see. We'll see. And when it talks about being in presence with God and just kind of seeing what, what he's already done in your life, you'll see those blessings and lessons in the future, right? And let's go back uh, 10 verses before the one, the chapter 11, or excuse me, the verse 11 that brought us here. Let's go back. Verses 1 through 8 in chapter 3, it's very powerful. You might have heard some of this before because it's very quoted. It says, uh, there's a time for everything. For everything, there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry, a time to laugh, a time to grieve, a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And there is truly everything. There's truly a season for everything. It's truly a season for everything. And even if we don't see what God is doing, he is still moving. He lets sin and evilness build up and then he tears it down. Let's go to verse 14 and 15 real quick, uh, which is the, the couple verses after. And it says, I know that whatever God does is final. Nothing can be added to it or taken from it. God's purpose is that people should fear him, fear him, not man. What is happening now has happened before, and what will happen in the future has happened before, because God makes the same things happen over and over again. And this is from the wisest man ever named Solomon. He wrote this book, if you're wondering who wrote this book. And history repeats itself, right? We've heard that our entire lives. They even taught that. that they even taught us that in, um, in school, I think. 
Maybe that was before the indoctrination. Who knows? But anyway, redemption and revival will happen again in America, y'all. You know, it may feel like we're lost with the technology and just people are getting so far away from God. But I think redemption and revival is going to happen again. And that's what a lot of the prophetic voices have been saying uh, about this year specifically, 2021. And uh, it's going to happen not just in the world, in our country. I think it's going to happen within ourselves, within our families, our friends, and even our communities. And you and I are a big part of that. You know, I think a lot of times we see the we see the world too big. We see the world too like, oh, I can't make a difference because I don't want to be a politician. Or I can't make a difference because I don't want to do this. But it's like, man, if we just kind of we kind of narrowed our scope in on the things around the people around us and the and the community that we live in, like think of how much how much goodness we can provide to that. And then from there it grows and it expands into something bigger than that. It turns from a community to then a city and then a city to a state. You know, it just keeps on expanding state to a nation, a region, you know? And I think we have that power, especially since we uh since we are believers of Christ and we have God on our side already. And just because just because the the uh, the Biden uh dude is going into office and Kanye is not <laughs> does not mean we must lose our values or feel discouraged that what we believe and stand for is wrong. Listen to me. This is very, very important what I'm saying right now. Just because Kanye <laughs> didn't win uh, or didn't get put in the office by those who uh, control that thing uh, does not mean that we must lose our values or feel discouraged that what we believe and stand for is wrong. That's what they want us to think, which is why you see the censorship and the shadow banning on Christians and conservative voices. That's why you see the media and others calling Trump supporters domestic terrorists. That's why you see famous Hollywood actors constantly saying we need to reprogram these voters. That's why you see book deals being slashed from conservatives. That's why you see Mike Lindell, the guy that made that my pillow thing, uh, his pillows being removed from Bed Bath and Beyond and Kohl's. And there's so many more examples I can give you, but that's just that's all you need to know right now. That's all you get the point. And these big businesses, corporations, elites, and liberal politicians are all in the same club. And we, the little guys, we ain't invited. And they don't see us as humans, guys. They don't see us as their fellow Americans. They don't. They don't. I'm sorry I have to be the one to tell you this. They see us as pawns in their game of chess. Gosh, sometimes that show's too real. <laughs> now listen to this verse. Listen to this verse, verse 16 through 17. It's good stuff. I also noticed that under the sun there is evil in the courtroom. Oh my gosh, it's like God shows you a verse and sends you it straight there. Huh. I also noticed that there's um under the sun that there is evil in the courtroom. Yes, even the courts of law are corrupt. I said to myself, in due season, God will judge everyone, both good and bad, for all their deeds. Gosh, man, the Bible is the living word of God. And we know, we know as we move throughout this life, loving God, loving people, our families, raising right, and doing the Lord's will, that we will cross the pearly gates with confidence. Those people doing other people wrong, especially those in positions of power, they will have their judgment day coming. They'll have their judgment day coming. All we can do is pray that they get touched by the Holy Ghost. And we we speak truth despite the censorship. We're not embarrassed about our faith. We're not, in, we're not timid to tell people we, we rock with Jesus. Because, ladies and gentlemen, faith without works is dead. If you have faith but you're afraid to express that faith, uh, you don't got faith. You got silent faith. You got lukewarm faith. Do you want to go to the grave with lukewarm faith? Have you ever read through Revelations? Have you heard what Jesus said about lukewarm faith? And that's what this show is designed for us, to lift us up. All right? People listen to the show that don't know Christ. People listen to the show that are confused about Christ. People listen to the show that think they rock with Christ. There's people listen to the show that really rock with Christ. You know, sometimes I... I fall my, I find myself the needle in the middle somewhere sometimes. You know, I get off track. I backslide it in seasons and certain things. I still struggle with, like I said, impatience, self-control, uh, selfishness. You know, I still got a lot of work to do. I'm in year one, baby. <laughs> I'm rookie in the game. 
And you may be too, but we got to strive for greatness. We got to strive for more. We must read these Jesus on leadership books and be like, oh man, I need to tighten that up. We must still work towards creating the life that God has planned for us and with him at the center. We must still raise our children up in the word and not the world. We must raise our children up in the word and not the world. Let's go to verses 18 through 19, baby. I also thought about the human condition, how God proves to people that they are like animals. For people and animals share the same fate. Both breathe and both must die. So people have no real advantage over the animals. How meaningless. And I like that verse because it really makes you think. You know, I think he said it from a very like um, just kind of showing you like how how fragile life is and how unimportant it is when you take a step back. Right. And I love just being stressed and worried about the world. I don't love it, but I love being able to take a step back after I have been in that kind of spirit and that energy, which does not come from God and realize how temporary this all is. How bigger this life is than just life and death. Freedom and no freedom. There's freedom in Jesus, you know, and that's what we need to focus on. We will go into this next season of life with our heads held high and living the truth that God has allowed us to see. The veil has been stripped down and we have an opportunity to bring others to the light. How beautiful is that? You know, we can put this political season behind us. We can kind of see what happens and be like, oh, man. Sure wish that policy didn't get passed (laughs) but we can still have the opportunity to do things around us and and, and, and in our communities like we talked about earlier the corruption the lies and the evil will expose itself slowly and half the country i don't know if you've noticed this half the country has been red pilled to what is going on and think about this despite the media constantly bashing the president for four years making up hoaxes about Russia collusion and trying to impeach multiple times, despite every celebrity crying for him to be removed from office, despite trigger words like he's a racist and misogynistic and white supremacist and narcissist being dumped on his name constantly. 75 million people, if not more, I think it was more, still saw through the smoke screens. They still say the truth. And we're willing to go out on a Tuesday and vote on that truth. Put their name behind that truth. I don't know. I don't know. Do you know? I don't know. Now, we put our trust, and I think that sometimes this gets a little bit misinterpreted. Not not on this show, per se, because I think you all know the deal. But I think it gets a little misinterpreted by people who supported Trump, who are Christian. I think the outside looking in uh, view that as a, like we're somehow on our hands and knees for a political savior. And I don't think that's the case. We put our hope and our trust in Jesus Christ. But when you see, what's the expression? When you see like a cat, you got to identify a cat or call a cat a cat. What's it? I don't know what it is, but when you see evil, you got to identify evil is what I'm trying to get at. When you see from the first hundred days of office that they're going to take away, uh, they're going to change abortion laws and they're going to they're going to allow 11 to 25 million people into this country when we're in the, in a pandemic and legally be able to vote. And they're going to give them free health care. It's like, ah, what? <laughs> what are we doing? Wait, there's a hundred day mask mandate. I got to cover up my identity even longer, even though there's a vaccine. You know, when you see stuff like that, you got to call it out. You can't just sit on the sidelines if you have a podcast, at least, you know, if you have a Facebook account. Even that, I mean, that's just dangerous. Because That's why I like the podcast so much, because it's like, if you don't like what I say, you can just tune out, baby. You know, like, it's the best. I mean, you can, I mean, some people already did this. You can go and one star my podcast on Apple if you don't like what I say. And some people have already done that, which is, uh, I've had haters since I was 16, so I'm okay with it. Uh, but. And there's a lot of people showing love in that five star. So if you like the show, if you're indifferent about the show or whatever, just go rate it. You know, I love to see what the, what the people are thinking that are actually listening to the show. Uh, do that on Apple. You just scroll all the way to the bottom and you can rate and review it. If you want to write a nice review, help me out. Come through. Don't write a mean review. I don't like that. That's that's just that's that's a little too far. But like I'm saying that we put our trust and our faith in in Christ. We we never do it with a political savior. Unfortunately, though, there's a bigger spiritual war going on in Washington and in the world right now. You can just tell. I think a lot of people are awakened to that. 
I think that uh, they've they've uh, tried to keep it behind the curtain for so long. I'll give you guys a couple examples. Look up the WikiLeaks that got released. Uh, you can look up um, what Eric's um, Edward Snowden has released about the government. There has been whistleblowers from inside the government have let the American people know what is going on. Uh, Hillary's emails. The reason that the Russian hoax was a thing was because she conspired with somebody else to go ahead and um, push push that agenda on Trump, that attention on him, so that her emails won't get any kind of um, uh, media uh, scrutiny and the American people would be basically distracted. Weapons of mass distraction, kind of like we talked about earlier. So there's a lot of things that people are seeing because technology allows people to kind of get inside baseball about what's going on. And I think it's great. I think it's great because it kind of exposes... Uh, the corrupt the corruption and kind of gets your um your your vote where it should be you know and it, it maybe is gonna ha- inspire people that are running for office to step up and do the right thing man do the right thing be good how hard is it man you got people's lives at, like at hand you know sending all this money overseas when America just went through a tough time. You're going to send them $600 after 10 months with the summer of love and the riots and all that? Don't want to help out small businesses, but you want to put 25,000 troops at a virtual inauguration? All right. You know? All right. (laughs) And we must continue to pray faithfully that the will of God is done on earth, and we must take action as we see fit, whether that be with words career pursuits, or even a passion for putting on for Jesus and raising your kids up in the, in the word instead of the world. We are the birdhouse, and we have a bright future as believers in Christ. We are blessed he has even allowed us to find him, to know him and seek him. Think about this, guys. Put yourself in this mindset for a second. We could be on the other side of Christ right now. Do you realize that we could be lost in our identity? Am I a boy? Am I a girl? Who do I like? We could be hateful of everything and anything. We could use oppression as an excuse for our own shortcomings. But uh, Philippians 4.13 says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And we know that because once we get baptized in the name of Jesus, once we know that Jesus is the way, there's freedom in that. And there's a way of living your life where you realize things that that you didn't realize before and we have to pray for those people we have to try our best to just bring the people that are struggling with sin and struggling with uh this world and struggling with to understand life and just uh lash out and just use emotion as their as their as the way they walk in this life we have to try our best to just speak that truth and give them give them god man share the pod <laughs> put it on your facebook i don't know that's bold putting this podcast on your facebook right now is bold <laughs> uh, no, I'm playing, but uh, this will be the only episode this week for you guys. Uh, I'll be back next week with some fresh words for you guys. Please do me a solid and share the show with a couple friends, uh, a couple friends that need it, that haven't heard it, or uh, that have you know heard it before. Whatever you gotta do. Uh, we have some big news coming for you guys, the fans. Some big news for the fans. I'll just tell you what it is. I'm working on some merch for you guys. The merch is so tough. Oh, my God. You're going to love it. It's so hard. Oh, my gosh. It's so beautiful. And uh, I think you're going to be not only happy to support the show and the ministry, but you're going to be happy to put the shirt and the hoodie and the hat on. Oh, it looks so good. Um, So, yeah, big news coming with that. Uh, I don't know. I don't have like a release date so far. I'm I'm in the works. Should be within a few weeks, uh, a month tops. And we got some big news for the Rippies coming up soon. Be on the lookout for those things. And if it's your first time here, hey, you picked an interesting episode to come through. Uh, Please subscribe and check out some of the previous episodes, especially the earlier ones where we're really just in the word and we're really just um, discovering who Jesus is for the first time. Uh, I basically read through the New Testament with you guys uh, in the first, I think, 50 episodes. And right now we're basically... Uh, preparing for the second semester of my ministry school. Uh, So I'm in the book right now by Gene Wilkes called Jesus on Leadership. And I'm just kind of bouncing around the Bible right now until um, until I I get kind of redirected into where I want to go. I just read halfway through Matthew and I'm going to finish Matthew in the next few days, maybe a few weeks. Um, And I'm just kind of bouncing around right now. I'm letting letting kind of God take the wheel as far as where I want to read next. And um, I encourage you guys, there's actually a new podcast that's number one right now 
on iTunes and Apple Podcasts, whatever. Uh, I haven't listened to it yet, but it actually came out this year, and it's called. Uh, let me pull it up for you guys because it's a, a cool supplement to this podcast. You might even like it more. Who knows? It's called uh, The Bible in a Year. This guy basically just goes through stories of the Bible and tries to give you 20-minute episodes of stuff that happens in the Bible, and I hear good things about it. It's the number one podcast right now, which is awesome. The Word of God is number one on stinking iTunes, and I'm hoping that his show kind of um, helps this show kind of move up as well. Uh, I mean, that's a bold thing to, to hope and wish for, but, hey, you never know. And it's just cool to see that uh, a podcast can be about God and it can be so highly received. I think it has like 10,000 ratings and reviews of five stars and people just love it. And my sister-in-law, Lauren, told me about it, that she's been listening to it as well on the days that I Like Birds um, isn't live. So go check that out, but don't ditch us um, in the process. And uh, again, I'll tell you the name. It's called The Bible in a Year uh, with Mike Schmidt featuring Jeff uh, Cavins. And yeah, man, it's cool. So. Uh, I haven't checked it out, so it's cool that they're just doing that, though. And uh, that the Godcast is, is, I think it's the future, man. I think it's the future of hearing the gospel, especially with the way churches have been shutting down and um, bending over, uh, <laughs> um, bending uh, for the culture that we're living in right now. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future, man. we got a bright future. Uh, be on the lookout for the things I mentioned. Uh, subscribe to the show. Share the show. Rate and review the show if you want. And remember that God is good and Jesus is dope. Thank you for being here. We are out from Kentucky. All right.